everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video, which is going to be my summer book haul. So I would normally call this like my July book haul, but honestly, I got these books throughout June, July and the first week of August. I'm not actually completely sure that this is every single book I've got in the last few months, though it's more than enough. Um, but I have been rubbish at keeping track of which ones I've got, so we're just going with it. And this is just a whole heap of books I'm very excited for that I got recently. But before we do the haul, I do actually have two Illumicrate boxes. I have the June and the July boxes here. Um, so we're going to do some unboxings quickly to start this off. Actually though, I am now an Illumicrate rep, not for the June box, but for the July box I am. My code is browsing5 to get 5% off three and six month subscriptions. It will be linked down below as always. Thank you again to Illumicrate for having me on as a rep. I am very excited to be doing my second rep term with them and we're gonna unbox both these boxes. I'm gonna start with June just for the sake of chronology and yeah, let's do it. Also for anyone who would expect yellow boxes, um, yes, Illuminate boxes are currently not coming in their standard yellow. I think just because they can't get hold of the boxes. So we're, we're lacking the yellow, but it's exciting nonetheless. So for June, the theme is Out of the Woods. I'm really excited for this. I know what the book is. I always know what the books are for these boxes. I follow a lot of people who like tell you what the books are going to be because I'm nosy. Um, but nonetheless, I'm excited. And I like knowing the book. I like knowing what's coming. And this isn't what I'm hugely excited for, but I have been hearing good things, so I'm intrigued. July, on the other hand, very excited. But we'll get to that in a minute. So first item is Holly Black. Oh, it says Holly Black on it. Okay, so I'm assuming it's Holly Black inspired. I've never read any Holly Black books. But it is this very pretty sort of pennant thing. Look at that. I don't know if the light's going to show you that very well. But that is so pretty. Um, what's it say? Oh, based on the darkest part of the forest. Nice. That is so pretty. I have not read, as I said, any Holly Black. I've certainly not read Dark Part of the Forest. But nonetheless, that is absolutely stunning. That's really cool. Right, next up. Oh, that's nice. Okay, this is a little jigsaw puzzle. I think they've been doing like a series of these. I've got a couple others of them because I've been subscribed to Lumicrate for ages, relevant of being a rep. And this is a little J.R.R. Tolkien one. And that design, it shows on the inside, is stunning. I can see myself doing that. I have just started watching a new TV show. So I could be very, very tempted to do that puzzle while sitting watching. I'm gonna destroy my living room floor with this laid out on it probably, but it's worth it. That looks fun. I'm excited for that. Okay, next up we have this box. And as I said, I follow a lot of uh, like groups which talk about subscription boxes. So I feel like I know what this is, but we're gonna open it and find out if it is what I'm thinking. It looks, it looks promising. Oh no, it's not. It's not what I thought it was. That must be in a different box. Interesting. Okay, what is this? Is this a little, little water bottle? Oh, that's so pretty. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have the promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Robert Frost. Look how pretty that is. That is absolutely stunning. Like a wintry woodland kind of image. I'm assuming this is a water bottle. It is indeed. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Big fan of that. Would be too scared to ever take it out of the house because it's glass and I'd break it. That is absolutely stunning. Big fan of that. I always like useful items. Useful items, that's my jam. Next up, we have a wood mark. I genuinely love wood marks. Just to show you the design quickly. That's what it looks like. What does it say? The wood makes monsters of all of us by Ashley Poston. I, yeah, I love wood marks. I really enjoy them because they hit that perfect medium between being not so bulky that they're annoying but bulky enough that it's really easy to find your page i found a lot of like paper bookmarks i actually struggle to find them in the book sometimes wooden bookmarks are great i'm a massive fan of that i've got a few of these now and i use them so much i absolutely love them so that big fan of that and that is again a stunning design they've really gone for like I mean, understandably, kind of wood theme throughout, and I like it. Okay, and we've got two little things that look like pins. One of these will be the sort of 
pin of the month that goes with the book and one we will find out what it is. Okay, so this is the extra one. This is a little wooden pin for We Hunt the Flame. A really cute little bow and arrow there. That is really, really cute. Big fan of that. It says The Huntress. I like that, I like that. I've mentioned before that I really like enamel pins and pins. I used to have a huge collection, which I lost most of because moving back and forth to uni is never good for possessions. Um, but yes, I'm glad to kind of be gradually starting my collection back up, mainly through a Luma Crate monthly pins, such as this one. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so I guess this reveals the book at this point. We'll do that quickly. Um, it's The Wolf and the Woodsman. And this is, as always, a pin by Stacey McKevy Gaunt, who I love I have some of their pins like that I've bought myself I love them so much and this is the design it's just a little metal one that is so pretty I really like that and that has me really intrigued to read the book and kind of know its relevance okay let's let's get the book out and get the box off my lap and let's see Illumicrate always have the most stunning editions so I'm very intrigued to see what they did with this one because it was already a really pretty cover oh my god okay yeah, I'm obsessed. Right. Okay, so this is the cover and I am obsessed with this because the colour scheme of the originally published book is this kind of blue and orange and red, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. Monochrome and red. That I can get on board with. Big fan. And then it's got red sprayed edges with stenciled along the edge. Beautiful. Do I have anything under the dust jacket? Oh, oh my... They've gone all out with this one. Okay, okay. So under the dust jacket, it has embossing saying, will you tell me a story, wolf girl? So that in itself is absolutely stunning. And then on top of that, it has art on the back of the dust jacket. Let me show you. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh, okay. My interest in this book has just skyrocketed because I want to know what all of this art refers to. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay, let's read out the blurb quickly. Oh, also, as always, it's come with an author's note with a stunning piece of art on the back. Big fan of that, but let's read the blurb. So the blurb says, a dark, evocative and unforgettable fantasy debut steeped in Hungarian history and Jewish mythology, perfect fans of Nomi Novik and Catherine Arden. In her forest veiled pagan village, Evik, maybe? is the only one without power, treated like an outcast due to her corrupted bloodline. So when the soldiers arrive from the Holy Order of Woodsmen to claim a girl for the king's blood sacrifice, Evik is betrayed by her fellow villagers and surrendered. Intriguing. When monsters attack the woodsmen and their captive en route to the capital, they slaughter everyone but Evik and the cold, one-eyed captain. But she soon learns he's no ordinary woodsman. He's Gaspar Barony. I'm definitely getting these names wrong. The disgraced prince, whose cruelly zealous brother plans to seize the throne and instigate a reign of religious persecution and ethnic cleansing. With no one else to rely on, Avik and the captain form a tenuous pact to stop his brother. Intriguing! Okay, so this is stunning. As always, Illumicrate killed it. But before going on too much about how great Illumicrate are, I'm going to do the July box as well. Okay, here we go. July box. Let us see. So the theme for this one is never enough. Ooh, there we go. And... If you know of books coming out soon, you'll probably know what book this is just from that design. So you can be just as excited as I am. Oh, okay, first thing on the top, this is actually really cool, um, is the In the Ravenous Dark signed book plate. Um, this was the May, I think, possibly April um, book. And yeah, the book plates haven't come in in time, so they said they put it in a future box. So there it is, awesome, okay, cool. Now onto the things that are actually meant to be in the June box, July box. Okay, we're gonna start with a mug which is, as always, a Rosie Thorns mug. I don't know what fandom this is. It's between us. It's a stunning little box. Let's see the mug and then I'll look if I can't work it out at the spoiler card to work out what fandom it is. Okay, I don't know what fandom this is for, but I'm obsessed with it. Is this Poppy War? It is Poppy War. I've not read the Poppy Wars. I don't know how I guessed that. But look, just quickly do this. Look at the stunningness. Oh my gosh. As ever, Rosie Thorns has absolutely killed it with this design. That is beautiful. I'm going to need to find a place for that to be on my shelves because I'm obsessed with that. Okay, as ever, Illumicrate mugs, absolutely on point. Next up we have this, whatever it may be. Oh, this looks like it might be like the um, Addie LaRue 
picture frame that we had in what must have been October last year. Shows how long I've been subscribed. Um, there we go. It's like a Perspex picture frame, the design on it. Yes. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that design. So it's like a Perspex magnetic picture frame. It has a piece of art in it. I don't know what fandom the art is from. Oh, nice. It's Red Rising artwork and the frame is apparently Red Rising design as well. But honestly, it's just a cool like art deco geometric design. So just to show you, you can pop that off. You could take the out out and you can just use it as a frame, like for whatever you wanted. Um, I'll leave the print in it for now. But yeah, I really love these frames that they do because they're so pretty and they're so versatile because like you could literally put any art in that and it's just a gorgeous little frame. Big fan of that. Okay, next up, this I think is the one I've seen around about kind of all these sites I follow that talk about book boxes and subscription boxes. Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm also just intrigued because this box in general is much heavier and bigger than like a lot of the Lumicrate ones I've had. Yeah, here we go, okay. Oh, I didn't realize who it was. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so it's this um, like clay, I don't know, what's it called? Plaster cast um, bust, there we go, which a lot of people are like obsessed with putting on their like bookshelves and stuff. It's not really my aesthetic, but I do like the idea and it's Lila Bard, so Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I'm not gonna lie, although it's not really my aesthetic, it is a kind of badass item. Like, it's quite cool and it's really different from the sort of thing you normally see, which I do appreciate. Still more items. Okay, so we've got this little box here. I have no idea what this is. Let's see. Oh, it's pretty. Okay, this looks like it could be a little pocket mirror or something. It's a stunning design. Okay, so just quickly, that's the design on the front. And then on the back it says, to define is to limit, I think. Yes. And is it a little mirror? Yes, it's a little flipping up pocket mirror. That is really cute. I don't know if that's a specific fandom or just generically bookish. Dorian Gray! Nice! Okay, I have not read Dorian Gray, um, but obviously know of it. It's a classic. That's really cool! And then next up we have a little fan, which honestly could have used a few weeks ago in the absolute heat wave that the UK is happening having at the moment, though less so now it was. That's actually like really nice quality. I just looked at the spoiler card. Oh, the artwork is Descendant of the Crane. So this is what it looks like. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but just to try and show you that's the writing. And it says, no knight was perfect for treason, but this one came close. I love this. I have to send it the crane and I've been really meaning to read it for a long time. And I've also just got Joan He's new book, The Ones We're Meant to Find. So maybe this is the incentive I need to finally get around to it. Okay, and now we're down to the pin and the book. So I'm going to do the book first because I've seen this version online and I've been dying to open my box and get to it. I've just not felt up to filming. So, you know, has to be done so I can appreciate the glory. Let's pull it out this way. So this is the book. Oh, I love it. It's She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Stunning spine, all gold, stunning with gold foiling, but the edges are what I love. Look at this gradient with an opposite gradient printing. So pretty, and it's got a little signed book plate and these stunning end pages. Let's see if there's anything under the dust jacket. Oh my God, again, something under the dust jacket and the back of the um, dust jacket itself. So the underside of the dust jacket, it says, she didn't just want greatness, she wanted the world. A stunning little dragon there. And then on the back of the dust jacket is this absolutely gorgeous piece of artwork. As I said before, Illumicrate are really, really spoiling us at the moment. They truly, truly are. And then finally, we have got the pin. Okay, let's open this. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, as always, stunning themed pin to match the book. And yes, they've done their color scheme very well there. Amazing. Okay, so with the two unboxings out of the way, I am just gonna run through a lot of the books I got recently. I'm probably not gonna do full synopses for all of these for the sake of this video, probably getting very long considering I've already been filming for 20 minutes, but I'm gonna start with possibly my most anticipated books in a really long time. It is the Lit Joy Crate editions of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I'm not going to show these books in all of their glory because I am planning to do a video quite soon on my Lainey Taylor collection because it's quite extensive and I will show them fully there. But just quickly, the slipcase they are in is gorgeous. Miracles for breakfast. Just show you the whole way around because it's 
stunning. And then let's just show you the covers in a couple of details. So firstly, we have Strange the Dreamer with Laszlo on it. They all have these gilded edges. You can see the shine and like art on the back. They are just thoroughly stunning books. And then Muse of Nightmares, we have Sarai on the front. Again, gilded edges and more stunning artwork on the back cover. I'm obsessed with these. They have, let me see if I can find an example. Oh, I'll show you this as well. Okay, so they're hand signed by Lainey Taylor. I'm being really careful with them. Um, you can see on a stunning, stunning design there. And then there's actually annotations from Lainey Taylor throughout the book. So here's just an example. Um, she's like annotated, you can see there. I have not read through all the annotations yet. I don't know when I'm going to. I just reread this series, but yes, I am beyond excited to have these in my possession. I pre-ordered them a good long while ago and they finally arrived and I'm thrilled. Okay, so running through pretty quickly, starting with pretty much as always, the books that have been sent by publishers. First up we have Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune, which was sent to me by um, Pam McMillan in the UK, Black Crow PR. Thank you so much. I have been highly anticipating this book. Unsurprisingly, and this book follows Wallace who dies pretty much right at the beginning of the book and it's him basically dealing with the grief of his own death and coming to terms with it. So it's kind of like an afterlife vibe. It's really good, it's really heartwarming. Yes, I've already read it. Um, but yes, highly anticipated. Cannot believe I've already owned and read this book considering it is August and this doesn't come out till like end of September. I'm so thankful, but yes. That's the first book I hauled and died over. Another one I hauled and died over is A Marvelous Light by Freya Mask. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I've not read this one yet. It comes out in November. Again, this is from Pam McMillan and Black Crow PR. And this is like Jonathan Strange, Mr. Norrell meets Red, White, and Royal Blue, I feel like is the vibe. People saying like for fans of The Binding, which is a book I did enjoy when I read it. I think it's like Edwardian setting, magical, gay, steamy, stunning. I'm very excited. I can't wait to read it. And then the other one I've been sent is by Titan and that's Vampires Never Get Old, which is like an anthology of vampire stories written by well-known authors. I'm most excited for V. E. Schwab, but there's also Judy Murphy, Rebecca Roanhorse, Stonyell Clayton and Tessa Gratton. I've never actually read the other four authors, but I do know of all of them and it does say and many more. Oh, there's more names on the back. Here we go. Samira Ahmed, Danielle Clayton, Zoraida Cordova and Natalie C. Parker, Heidi Hellig, uh, Marco Shiro, another author I've been dying to read. Laura Ruby and Kayla Whaley, I think. So I think other than one or two, I do know every author in here. And yeah, I'm super excited to give it a go. Just some little like vampire short stories. I've never read many vampire books. I was kind of never quite in the vampire era of YA. So excited to read this. And then quick thing, we're gonna go through a few gifts I got. Um, some of these were actually birthday gifts, but they came after I did my birthday unboxing. And then one of them is just a really nice gift someone sent me. So first up from Ashley at Frolic Through Fiction, we have A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I'm so excited for this. Um, this is one I've seen absolutely doing the rounds recently and I really want to read. It's like indie pubbed. It sounds really cool. I think it's about like Dracula's wives. Yeah, Dracula's brides, um, like reverse harem, maybe? I don't know. I think it's kind of meant to be smutty and everyone says it's amazing, so I want to read it. Next up we have Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. This is the sequel to Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh, which I read in like March or something and loved. So very excited to read. It's a little tour novella. Again, this was sent to me by name is escaping me, Adriana. So thank you so much to Adriana for sending this. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The first one of these was like a gothic uh, male male paranormal vibe so I'm assuming it's going to be similar and I'm very excited and then finally from Carolina we have The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic I'm so hyped for this this is one of these series that I understand from everyone is very problematic but utterly addictive and really good fun to read I've wanted to read it for years I did actually buy all the books on Kindle and tried reading it and it just didn't grab me but I've said before and I'll say again, I often struggle with Kindle books. So very, very excited to give the physical copy a go and see if that helps because I'm not sure the first book's gonna be my vibe, but apparently they get way better as the series goes on. There's a trilogy and I have a sneaking suspicion this is one of those books I'm gonna end up a little bit obsessed with. So I'm really ready to give it a go. Okay, and then we have the massive, massive, massive stack of books I bought for myself. So what order do I do these in? I'll do one, I'll do a couple I'm really excited for. And then I'm going to do all the ones I got in my London trip, which I went on really recently. So first up, A Psalm for the Wild, built by Becky Chambers. 
anyone who doesn't know, I read this book back in March. I read an e arc of it and it's my favourite book of the year so far. I've talked about it a million and one times and I love it. And I do actually now have two physical copies of it because I have no chill. I've got a standard US hardback, which this is as well, but I'll explain. But I've got one which I'm planning to reread and like fully annotate. I've never annotated a book, but I really want to, like to the extent if I want to like it, basically this book gave me an existential crisis and I loved it and it was fascinating to me so I'm really keen to reread it and whenever I have a thought so like get a piece of paper write it down and then like put it in the book like have a book version of this which is just all my thoughts however this version is signed I went to um, an online event with Solid State Books and as part of the ticket you could get a signed copy of the book so there we go there was a signature so I had to because it's amazing and I cannot wait to reread it and I'm so glad I can like hold this book now instead of just my iPad Okay, so the next four books are books I got in London when I went to London yesterday. Um, I got two of them from a cool little shop called Bookshop Theatre in Waterloo, and then the other two were from Foils. The first is Euripides Alcestis, definitely saying it wrong, I know I am, but it's this little really old copy of quite a few Greek plays by Euripides with some notes at the back. I have a plan at some point to learn more about Greek myth. I really want to do it. I used to love Greek myth when I was a lot younger and I've forgotten everything I used to know and I'm really intrigued by it and I want to get to the point of reading the Iliad and the Odyssey and things like that. And I suddenly had a thought whilst looking in this little like bookshop all about drama and theatre. I love theatre and why would I not also read some Greek plays when I come to do this? And I found this cute little edition and I just had to have it. So one day I will get to this. I have no idea when, but I'm excited for it. And then the other one I got is I came across in this shop these little tiny editions called Penguin Books Great Ideas and they're these stunning little editions. Everyone has a completely different cover design of all sorts of things like philosophy and pieces of writing. As it says it's just great ideas like I'll read the thing on the back. It says throughout history some books have changed the world, they have transformed the way we see ourselves and each other, they've inspired debate, dissent, war and revolution, they've enlightened, outraged, provoked and comforted, they've enriched lives and destroyed them. Now Penkin brings you the works of great thinkers, pioneers, radicals and visionaries whose ideas shook civilization and helped make us who we are. All sorts of different things, there's feminist ones, like the bloody communist manifesto was one of them, but I got Charles Darwin on natural selection. Um, I absolutely love Charles Darwin, that's so nerdy. Um, I grew up being obsessed with Charles Darwin, I wanted to do zoology for a really long time, so I was planning to study at uni before I changed what I was doing, and so I've read I think this or at least parts of it before, but I'm very keen to have a gorgeous stunning little edition of it, so those are my two like fun indie bookstore picks. And then we went to Foils, I say we, I was on my own, I went to Foils and I picked up two books. I picked up Horrid by Katrina Leno. I don't know much about this, but I've seen it everywhere. The cover is fascinating to me and stunning. I know a lot of people have loved it. It's one I've had on my radar for a long time and I'm incapable of going to foils and not buying something. So I picked it up and it came home with me. So I got that one. And then I got The 10,000 Doors of January by Alexi Harrow. This is my third copy of this book. I have an ARC. I have the US hardback. I now have the UK paperback. Basically I picked it up and it was floppy and all of a sudden I was buying it. Um, I don't need it, but I wanted it and it makes me really happy. Um, also because I want to buy this book from the UK to like let UK publishers know that it's doing well and they should publish more Alexi e. Harrow because I've never actually bought a UK copy of any of her books. So you know, had to be done. And then as we're on the topic of getting multiple editions of books, um, I do actually have two books here to hold up and they are Flashfire by TJ Klune and Flashfire by TJ Klune in the UK and the US hardback. This is a recent release. It is the sequel to The Extraordinaries, which is a book I love. It's YA queer about like superheroes and fan fiction and found family. It's great. Um, so yes, this is the UK cover. This is the US cover. I do need both because I cannot decide which in this series I prefer the covers of. Honestly, I love them both. And although I would normally just get the UK one for now and then the US one later, I had to get the US one now because the first print of this book has a reversed dust jacket, which is the cover of the fan fiction the main character writes. And I know this from the first book and I knew it's happening again for the second one. So of course I had to get it. Um, yeah. I'm not going to claim it was necessary, but I'm very happy about it. And then just a couple of other or a few other recent releases I've bought myself. First up we have XOXO by Axie O. I am so excited for this. I don't know much about it. I know it has to do with K-pop though, basically. Oh no, wait! 
K-pop and classical music. Classical music, right. Tangent. Classical music is something I need more of in books. Um, I've read a few which have a theme of classical music and I've loved them and I've just found another one. And it is my weird obsession in YA Contemporaries is when someone plays a lot of classical music. So keen on that, it's a good first line. So it's all about um, someone who's a classical musician and she runs into a mysterious handsome K-pop idol and they have an unforgettable evening wandering Los Angeles. Um, that sounds fun. This, yeah, it's a romance, it's cute. Also, added bonus, didn't know this until I bought it. Under the dust jacket is stunning. Look at this. Look at this. So pretty. I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, that will almost certainly be bumped up my TBR very high because I want to read it a lot. I then also have The Ghost We Keep by Mason Diva. This is another recent release. Mason Diva wrote I Wish You All The Best, which I really, really loved when I read it. So excited to read another one of their books. And I don't know much about this. I think it's about someone whose brother. Yes, okay. Um, Liam Cooper's older brother has died, been killed in a hit and run accident. And feeling Liam's feeling more alone than ever, feeling relationships, losing best friends. Yes, okay, excited. Sounds sad. I'm worried it will break me, but I'm really excited for it. And the final one I have is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. Victoria Lee is the author of the Feverweight duology, one of my favourite duologies of all time. I do have a whole vlog where I read it. And this is Sapphic Dark Academia, which has just come out. Of course I have to have it. I'm dying to read this. I don't know when I'll be able to, but I'm dying to. Okay, I realise we're really rushing through these. We're just on the last kind of set of books now, which is completely and utterly Ray at Hamilton Reads fault. So I really like Percy Jackson. I grew up reading the Percy Jackson books. I reread them last year and had a whale of a time. I cannot wait for the TV show. And I had like a vague awareness that there were graphic novel adaptations of them, but I'd kind of not thought too hard about it until yesterday I saw on Ray's Instagram story that the whole set of five graphic novels, well, I saw that she'd just got them. And I messaged her like, oh, just, just have interest. Where did you get those from? And she told me the whole set of five, aka all of the graphic novels, were for £35. Um, that was yesterday. This is today. <laughs> I caved. So we do have the graphic novel adaptations of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters, Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth, and Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. I have no self-control um, and I'm thrilled about it, honestly. Don't mind it at all, quite excited. Um, so yes, Ray, this is all your fault, but I do now have all of the Percy Jackson graphic novels and I'm really, really excited to reread them. I might wait and use this as like a refresher when more TV show hype's happening and I wanna remind myself of the story a bit before watching the show. So yeah, this was a truly necessary purchase. I'm astonished by how many of the books in this haul are just completely unnecessary, but I couldn't care less. But that is it. As ever, I'm not going to try and pick them up because there's far, far, far too many. I've had a, had a good few months. Um, I, you know, people always say it and I agree hugely that book buying and book reading are two very different hobbies. And I do tend to find, for me, these two kind of like move on a sliding scale. So if I'm not managing to read much, I often lean towards buying books more, which is very counterintuitive Whereas when I'm reading a lot, I feel less need to buy books. I feel like there needs to be a level of bookishness I'm always at and it just fluctuates which one's the predominant and it's been book buying recently because I've not had time or energy to read. So I've got a lot of books. I want to read them all right now. Hopefully it will get me back on with reading a bit more, maybe even filming, who knows. That is my haul. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and comment. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. There are links down below to all of my other social media if you want to connect in any other way. But that is it for this video, so bye, and I'll see you in the next one.